Now we're going to do a walkthrough of the GBIF, or the Global Biodiversity Information Facility website. The address for this is gbif.org, G-B-I-F. And this is a resource for really any organism across the world. So it's uh, really a growing resource. It's pretty amazing all the kinds of data that can be included in here these days. Uh, we're, of course, going to focus on some plants today, so uh, maybe I'll stick with the species we were looking at previously. Sagittaria cuneata, and you can just run a search on that. Uh, comes up with, um, the first hit was the species, so this is Sagittaria cuneata, and then the taxonomic authority for that. And this is what we would want to investigate. Uh, there also are links here to, um, here's some uh, other taxonomic categories within Sagittaria cuneata. Notice that they list zero occurrences. There's not a map associated, so those are probably not worth uh, tracking down. And then these are kind of minority, uh, minor investigations that might have map components to them. So we really want to use this one. It says we have almost 3,000 occurrences. How exciting. So I'm going to click on the name here. And gives me a whole bunch of information. Uh, off to the left, we have a categorization, so taxonomic categories in the hierarchy. So uh, plant kingdom, tracheophytes are the vascular plants, uh, Liliopsida are the flowering plants, Alismatales is a group of aquatic monocots, family Alismataceae, genus Sagittaria with its taxonomic authority, and then species Sagittaria cuneata with its taxonomic authority. And then over here, also a whole bunch of other names. These are synonyms. So these are other names that are not uh, currently considered valid. And instead, uh, any reference to something like Sagittaria aerifolia actually refers to Sagittaria cuneata, as uh, taxonomists have determined. So uh, two names exist, but really, biologically, they're referring to the same thing. So uh, they now count as synonyms. Uh, down in here, we've got some images. Uh, you can click in those. I can scroll through here with my scroll bar. Uh, these would be fairly curated. Uh, everything here, if, if it's incorrect, should be corrected over time. There's a really good community of people who police the uh, maps of, of so on, of what's available online. Uh, this is a global map, and it's uh, scaled. So we're way out looking at North America and bits of South America and Africa here. And uh, the hexagonal shapes on here, these are regions that are kind of arbitrary to, arbitrarily defined depending on how far out we've zoomed. Uh, we can zoom in to our place of interest, but you can just see kind of generally this is a species that's pretty widespread through the uh, most of the United States, kind of the northern half of the United States, up into Canada, up over toward Alaska. Uh, pretty natural looking distribution, so nothing looks really too funky about this. It's uh, places that are connected to each other and all sort of climatically similar as far as uh, at least temperature, I would say. Uh, one point you always want to watch out for, this is the location over here off the coast of Africa. This is zero longitude and zero latitude, uh, basically an error point that usually gets thrown on um, if somebody, say, forgets to input their latitude, longitude. Uh, we're going to zoom in and see the scale change a little bit, and the hexagons update, and uh, we notice that the scale gets a little more patchy. This can be affected by uh, whether people have collected the plants in an area, how rare they are. Um, other, other features can kind of affect this. So we have like a really big, this is sort of Minnesota here, a really big chunk of this species in Minnesota, relatively little from Wisconsin. Uh, that could be a, a reporting problem. It could be over time as people report more data that this uh, gets filled in a little bit better. So zoom in a little bit more. There's not too much left to see in uh, Wisconsin, which is roughly this shape, and uh, not too many points. And I think this is uh, not yet updated from the Wisflora site. So over time, they'll, they should be reporting their data to GBIF and have this integrated here. Uh, maybe we can zoom out again. Uh, looks like our number of specimens is not changing. Uh, we can click on this number of occurrences, and that'll take us to a little bit more of a data summary. Um, and 
over here, the points on the map, notice a lot of these are iNaturalist. So these are uh, going to be newer uh, pieces of evidence that are not based on specimens, but instead based on photographs. And uh, they're this iNaturalist research grade observation. So somebody took a photo and at least one other person verified, said that uh, sounds like the right species to me. Um, really important way to be building these maps using uh, modern evidence. If you wanted to, you could download this, so download this 3,000 results and see it in a uh, spreadsheet format that would allow you to sort, uh, maybe eliminate certain types of record and so on. But lots of, lots of resources here available on GPIF.